Okay, in this tutorial we're going to demonstrate importing an STL file to make into a rotary project. So if I go to import STL, if I have the rotary software, it will also upgrade my STL importer. So from my desktop, I've got this chest knight. Now when I have a piece that I'm importing in that instead of slicing it up this would make more sense if I could just turn it and carve it all as one solid piece I can set my scale to whatever I want and so let's say I want it with a two inch diameter base I can actually go and set that to be two inches and select next and instead of slicing this up, I can click on the rotary option there. And that actually creates a cylinder. Let me expand this window. A cylinder with which the piece is set in there. So if it's an angled piece, I can still use my tilting planes to angle the piece so that it, it fits in there or in the orientation that I want it to. Generally you want this yellow line to represent the support piece that's going to run through the whole thing to make sure that it holds together really well. This one here where it's indicating kind of the Z direction, this one is actually where the seam is going to appear. So you generally want to avoid putting seams on obvious places like uh, like the ridge of that main or right on the, the front snout here. Uh, if there is any variation in the overlap when the, the carving matches up there, it's going to show up a lot more here than it would say on the side of the horse over here. So you usually want to just orient this and pick an appropriate place that your seam is going to be hidden if it shows up in the, in the last bit of your carving. Uh, this one just allows you to shift back and forth the sliding plane. So one thing is that you're always going to be limited to the maximum diameter that you can carve on the rotary jig which is four and a quarter inches. So that's what size this tube, or this cylinder is, and so as long as whatever you've, you're carving fits within that, uh, that's, that's what it'll end up being. So let's go ahead, this is, this is set up. And let's go ahead and click uh, export, and then done, and then cancel. Okay, so it's unwrapped the, the model and made it into a flat pattern on my flat board here, which then shows up as a turned piece. Now you'll notice uh, because of the way that the bit goes here around the ears, you've got some angled in areas that actually get rather thin. So we're gonna have to work on that. And that little hole that was in there is not quite cut all the way through, which is fine. This model actually had this part under the horse as just a support for a 3D printer so in the end we're going to go cut this out with like some Dremel tools uh, when this is all finished. So let's go ahead and start reinforcing this and getting it ready to carve. One thing is that you can see here this is a really thin little center area and if you look over here you can see it's like paper thin it's almost non-existent. We're going to need to make sure that we, we create our part off area and our little hold on kind of tab. So let's draw an area here to beef up that. And this one, since this is pretty solid, we can actually just draw one region here and make it go all the way through. Let's set to 1.75. And that's not going to be thin enough, so 1.9 maybe. 
1.9 works pretty good. Now it does create an area there that may be undesirable. So maybe we'll have to do two. We'll create that region on the top and this region on the bottom. But say we want to do two of these on the same board. So I can go to board settings by either right clicking on the board or going to edit board settings. And I can make the length longer. So we'll set it to 12 inches. You'll notice the diameter here says four and, uh, and a quarter, which is that maximum diameter from the, the uh, piece that we, we created. Let's set that part off diameter to half an inch. And then this piece now goes bigger. Now the reason that it's four and a quarter is because this pattern is based off of four and a quarter and its depth is is what makes it actually the right diameter. So if I were to take this same pattern and put it on uh, a say a two inch diameter board or, or three inch I'm going to have to adjust the depth accordingly to make it wrap properly. So this one is was specifically made for a four and a quarter inch board and we can change the size of that four and a quarter just by putting a region around that area. So now you can look down at the bottom here of the screen and the required diameter is 2.071. So let's take this horse and we can even just mirror it across the bottom. So we've got two of those. Create another diameter for the middle, something a little bit thicker so it's nice and beefed up there. We can kind of space these out so that they fit nicely on the board so that we, way we can get two horses on one carve. Another thing that we need to worry about on this is the ears on the horse. Those are going to get really thin and even with bit optimization on uh, best here which automatically is when you import from the STL uh, those areas are still a little thin so we might want to create a little region back behind there, set it down to a depth that's going to help. So now it just kind of beefs up that, that whole area around the horse's ear so that when it's carving that it's got some support to it. It doesn't try to carve all the way around it and end up eliminating that. We can mirror that piece so that the ear on the other side matches that as well. So, then this carving's pretty well ready to go. We've got enough support on either end. We've got a part off diameter that matches the diameter of the, the hold on pieces here. We've got a larger diameter in the middle so that we can reduce our carving time. We could probably even reduce that diameter or change that diameter even more so that we don't have to carve so deep. It's mainly just there to, to hold on to those two pieces. So down at the bottom of the screen down here, it actually tells us the required diameter for this, this piece is 2.071. So when I go and I'm actually making a piece or preparing a piece to carve on this, I will need to make sure that my inner diameter is at least that size, if not larger. So then you save and upload and go carve the project.